Hello there, folks. Joe Wazoo here today. Just going to go through a quick example today of a way to send a ticket or a receipt via an email from a Redline product. Uh, this pretty simple example out here, I've got an HMI running. I got some fields on the screen here that I'll enter data and then I can put an email address in here. And then when I get done with this, uh, it will print a ticket. And in this case, the print ticket is going to email it to somebody. So in this application, I'm actually using over here in communications, uh, in the services section here, I'm using the mail manager. So here I have the mail manager. And of course, in the mail manager, right here, you have your edit contacts. So I'm doing something interesting here. If I click on the contacts, normally you might have somebody's name and then an email address here. But what I'm doing is I have this right here set up as a tag. So if I look at the left-hand side of Crimson, go here to data tags, you can see there's a tag right here, not in my folders, but there's a tag right here that is this guy. It's a string. So that's where I'm going to enter my email address. <clears throat> of course, uh, you would want to get with your IT group and to get your SMTP settings. So I've already got that set up here. I use a service called Auth SMTP to relay, but uh, you'll get the email settings from here from your IT department, and then uh, you can access and use their email server. So that's what I have set up in that area. Uh, if I go to data tags, nothing exciting here, team. I've just got a bunch of string tags uh, set up. I limited them just for, for this example. I set them up as 20 characters. So I got the store, a name, company, truck number, badge number, and then I have a random thing here for barrels that's going to create a random number between 0 and 100, just for example. So that's all I have in tags. Display pages, just a series of data entry fields here, and of course the email address. But when I push this button right here, print ticket, let me show you something. I go to properties here. If I click on the action tab right here, on the action tab you can see down here, that I'm calling some kind of a program called send ticket. So let me show you what that is. Over here on the left, I'll go into programs, and I happen to have a very simple program here called send ticket. And this program is using, team, the send mail function, which, by the way, you can find that in the lower right hand corner of Crimson. Click on system expand the functions tree over here on the right side and then expand the mail tree right here and there's a function there called send mail matter of fact if you right click on this show help info it'll open up the pdf and if you look here team in the pdf it even gives you an example this is the index name this section uh, right here well this is send file i opened the wrong one hold on I want to say send mail, this one right here. I wonder why it was like that. So it's going to have the the index number here, the subject, and the body. And then they'll also show you down here kind of an example of it right here. So this is just a simple one. What I'm doing, however, is in this program, I've got index zero here, which is that email address. And then I have a comma. And then I filled in uh, some stuff here. I probably should put a a uh, comment line here. I'll just put that next time. But this is actually the subject of the email, all in here. And then um, that's right to here. This, this is the subject is going to be ticket. And at some time, I'll put that in. And then after this comma, which is this thing right here, this here becomes the whole uh, ticket number for this thing that will print. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Uh, I'll go ahead and download it to my screen here. There we go, and I've got the screen up and running right here. Give it a second to refresh. All right, so if you watch here, let's say I put in for this example, uh, they're at Kmart here, and uh, maybe I'll put in some new name here. John Doe, for instance. He works for Warren Trucking. Maybe I'll make up a trucking number. There you go, and his badge number's... 07 got it like that. So I've got right here my email address. So if I leave it that, I'll click OK. If I hit print ticket, I'll print ticket, and then I'll go quickly go over here and check my email. 
So here I am looking here, but it hasn't came in yet. These are some examples I was playing with earlier. Let's see. Oh, look at right here, team. There's the new ticket. If I click on this guy, you can see here is, maybe I'll make this a little bigger. There's the transaction. There's the receipt, location. I put in some text here for the time, the date, and I filled in and I put it, so I made up a credit card number, by the way. Feel free to use that if you want. It won't work, but anyway. So if I go back over here, let's say that this time I'm at the Sears store and uh, this might be uh, Mr. Roebuck is the driver. I don't know how to spell that. Where do we do that? Um, and uh, I don't know, ABC Trucking for this one. His badge number is, oh, 8675309. Oh, I like that. And then we'll just put this in. Now, notice the barrel numbers are just a random generated. So I'll go ahead and hit print ticket. I have no idea what it does, but when it grabs it, if I go back over here, let's see if we get a new message. Hey, there it is. Just came in right there. You can see right here, team, this one's at Sears. The previous one was at Kmart. So if I click on this, you can see that it shows Mr. Roebuck, ABC Trucking. There's the barrels dropped. Of course, if I click on the other one, it shows John Doe, Warner, and so forth. So that's a pretty easy way, team, that you can use the send mail function to generate a receipt. And the big key part of it is uh, I'm using the tag names over here as strings. So they're filled in here. I did have to do a little bit of massaging of the data. I'm using the get now, month, date, and year, and time uh, for other fields, but I had to use the as text to convert that to a string, and therefore then it would show up correctly. So I'm going to try in this video to post this code down in the uh, description part of the video. So if you want to copy and paste, you're more than welcome to. But the important thing here too is that uh, at the end of each line, I have this slash r slash n that is a carriage return line feed so that the next line starts down below so that is what i have at the end of each one of those lines anyway uh check it out folks and uh, hey thanks a lot have a great day if you got any questions feel free to send me a note see you later